Hey guys, thanks for coming to Papa Bell Trains. It's time to wire up some track. Hi right, guys, it's Papa here, Papa Bell O Gauge Trains. Uh, today I'm gonna start wiring up my uh, main loop that I have down on my track. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, you can run a bus line, or you can have, I'm not sure what they actually call it, but you can just run separate lines out. I'll give you an example. I kind of <laughs> crudely did this for you. So there's my track. Here's your transformer. So the first way that I was talking about is you could use a, uh, a terminal block and then just run out not a very good marker here. Run lines out to different locations because you want a, you want to run a line in there every you know. I I had one guy that said, uh, "Hey, do it on every single track." That's kind of excessive. Um, I think maybe three to four feet, five feet at the most would be good. That way, you got good constant power the whole time. Um, you could do it. You know, like I say, run lines all the way out, kind of like in a spider web type setup. Um, there's two different ways you can do it. Uh, one of them is gonna, I'm going to show you as the way I'm going to do it. But if you're going to go temporary, you could run those out and just have lock-ons at each one of those locations going around. The second way that you could do this is there again. We got a new piece of paper here, paper plate. Cool. Quickest thing I can find in a bench. I use these for mixing paints and stuff like that. But what you could do, let me turn this down just a little bit so I don't have to hold it up so high. So what you can do here is off your transformer, I'm gonna run a bus line all the way around and it'll end here, just before the other end of it. Now you can do it one of two ways. You could run two lines, one going this way, one going that way. But because of where my bridge is, and my transformer's right here, I really can't do it that way. So I'm gonna have a bus line going all the way around and then I'm gonna drop feeder lines into the, all the way around. Like I say, probably where I'm just gonna drop lines off of that bus line, the main line that's gonna go around, which is gonna be 16 gauge. Some guys would say, oh no, you gotta use 14, you gotta use 12. I'm using 16. Um, you could go like it with an 18 feeder line, but I've got tons of 16, so I'm gonna go with the 16 feeder line also. But you're gonna have there, it'll be a, a feeder lines that will go on. The way that's gonna work, the feeder line will be attached to the bottom of the track, which I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. And it'll go right down and just drop right down through the, the tabletop to the bus line that's underneath. Once I get that bus line on there, I'm uh, fed through, I'm gonna show you how, uh, how I'm doing that. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to show you how to hook this wire to this track without using a lock on. Okay, so the process here is pretty simple. It's the tools that you're going to need. Uh, wire cutters and strippers. You don't need the fancy ones. You can have something simple. Simple wire cutters uh, and your wire strippers. Uh, flux. Some solder. Soldering gun. And I like having something extra to hold things for me. I just made this little guy. It's all it is is an allocator clip. I'm on a board with a screw through it. This way, when I'm soldering, I have a extra a third hand. So step one is we are going to strip our wire. Like I say, this is a 16 gauge. These, this type of wire stripper is actually really nice because it just peels it right off for you. Yeah, we'll do the other side. Now I'm only doing one side of these because I'm gonna be using, and I don't have them out here, I'll show them to you in a little bit. Uh, they call them T-taps. Um, see how nice and quick that works? This is, uh, this is made by Klein. I think I was uh, I got it for about fourteen fifteen dollars. Works pretty nice. You put the uh, your gauge wire in there, 
when you squeeze down, it puts pressure on it and then just pulls the wire, the outer casing of the wire right off. If you have to cut your wire, there's a hole right there. You just put it in, cut your wire. Okay, so now that we've got our wires cut, we need to tin this wire because this is not a pre-tinned wire. Um, it would be silver if it's pre-tinned. And that's pretty simple. We're gonna dip it in some flux. Now, I usually use a little bit thicker gauge of uh, solder here, but this is the last of this roll. I want to use it all up. So I'm going to heat that up a little bit. And just touch the solder to the wire and the flux pulls it right in. And bingo, that's tinned. If you don't have any soldering experience, watch a couple of videos on YouTube. Uh, I had never soldered anything before I got into, uh, whoops, we gotta put the flux on that. Before I started training, doing you know, the, the model railroading hobby a couple of years ago, I had never, never done any soldering before. Um, I've used flux before, putting together copper pipe, but uh, never actually soldered any wire. And once you learn how to do it, if, and it doesn't take long at all, um, it's super, super easy. One of the things that I make, um, I won't be using these with this track, but I used to use them when I had fast track, is I made little feeder wires and I would go through and pre tin you know tons of them and then on fast track I would just run that underneath to add uh, additional connecting um, if you run fast track and you're gonna have a semi-permanent layout I would highly suggest doing that it would it will save you a lot of problems down the road so the next thing we're gonna do so we have the wire tinned and we are gonna move on to doing our track I'm going to stop for a quick second because I got to find a piece of track. All right, guys, so I made a little mistake and uh, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. So that small piece of track that I started with, I threw that out and we're going to start all over. Um, I'm going to skip the steps up to there, but uh, I'm just going to use a regular piece of track that I'm actually going to use on, on the layout. So one of the other things that I'm doing to help with uh, good continuity of the, the the flow instead of having the feeders to everything um on on my curves that i'm not going to have any feeders going to i'm going to solder the tracks together one little tip that uh, i can give you to get that solder to and i um to get that solder to you know adhere a little bit better it helps to scup up that surface so i have a Kind of worn down but i have a small little wire brush wheel here on my dremel I'm just kind of roughing up that edges so it's going to have a little bit better uh also takes off um the little bit of uh coating that's on there too okay let's see if we're hot enough to do our first one and this is by the way Menard's track I decided to uh, get rid of all my fast track and replace it with Menard's track because I wanted to go tubular um, I thought about car graves or you know atlas or something but uh this is you know for me this is a lot easier to work with you know it doesn't take a lot you just want enough to keep it from moving around on you Dabble do you. Got 
Okay, so there's one. And I've got an actual soldering gun. Um, I don't know what it is. I bought this this one. It's just I find it a little bit easier to uh, to you know because uh, just easier to work with this soldering iron as opposed to with the soldering gun. Um, I am thinking about purchasing one of the self-feeding guns because the one I have is not a self-feeding gun. Okay, so that's together. Still have to put another piece on the end here. Um, but that basically, you know, I mean, you guys can see exactly what we're doing there. Set this over here. Turn that off. Okay, and uh, so that's how we're putting that track together so it's good and solid. Okay, so I have my, uh, my wires already pre-tinned. I'm gonna scuff up the edge a little bit here. As you can see, I mean, it takes off a little bit of that, that outer coat. So we're gonna, I don't know why I did all three, I only didn't needed to do two of them. So we're gonna spread it a little bit. Um, and we wanna make sure that we're putting this on the, the same rail as I'll be right back. Um, outside rail and this one is going to go this way so I actually need to put it on this rail open that up a little bit and I'll do this now so I don't forget to close that back up a little bit later okay and then I didn't do this in the first time I want to do this and just put a little flux down in there so it will get down in there a little bit. And we're going to heat it up. I mean, in this situation, the solder gun might work a little bit better because it's got a little bit of higher output than my, my soldering iron here. Or it's going to heat it up a little bit quicker. I'm laughing because I can hear my wife yelling at the dog upstairs and wondering what kind of trouble he's getting into this time. He's a good dog, but he's a little mischievous sometimes. to what he is doing because she's still giving him crap. I 
like I say, I mentioned a few minutes ago, using this my soldering gun would probably have been the better option here. I think in the future I will, because it takes a this this metal is a little harder to to heat up. There we go. So it's in there nice and tight. I could have probably cut these wires off a little bit, um, make them a little shorter. I'll do that in the future pieces that I do. But there you go, and it's on there good and tight. Um, and then they'll be, I'll just drill a hole. It'll run, oops, shit. Excuse my language, that track is still pretty hot. Um, don't wanna to touch it there. And then I'll drill a hole underneath. It'll run right down through the board. Once I have my ballast on there, you're not gonna see any wiring at all. So once you got your piece in, um, different people can do this a number of different ways. This is just the way I'm doing it for, to get good accuracy on where I'm drilling my holes. So I have my my feeder lines are going to the, the track right here. So I am going to just drill a hole in between these two tracks. handy and then we're just going to feed those lines right down through there And then I'll crawl up underneath there and pull those through a little bit tighter. And uh, then those will get connect connected to the bus line. Okay, so to give you an idea of how far apart I have these feeders, uh, they're about four feet. We have one here. And the next one is right, well, it's behind, right behind this. Okay. I don't know what you can say, but it's basically right here. So it's about four feet from the first one and the next one. And then my next one will be um, actually a little bit shorter distance, about another four feet continuing. Ah, I'm terrible at this sometimes. Sorry guys, <laughs> the next one's gonna be right about here and then, and so on. I'm gonna run them probably about every four feet. All right guys, so I'm underneath the layout now and we're gonna show you how I'm doing the bus wiring. Um, one of the things I've already done, um, I'm using a terminal block because I've decided, um, as I showed you earlier, I don't have a continuous loop all the way going around because of my bridge. So one of the things I figured I'd do is run a second line that's going to go straight to halfway point of the uh, track. So I don't know if it's going to work or not, but hopefully that'll help keep a little bit more power to that side um, because there's going to be multiple feeders coming off of this and each feeder you know draws a little bit more voltage so um, I don't know uh, it's not gonna hurt it but hopefully it'll help all right so let, let me show you where we're at here all right so I'm gonna apologize in advance so it's a little shaky so here's my my uh, transformer that I'm using it's just a CW80 um, I will be upgrading that eventually so I have the power coming into this terminal block um, there's cool ways that you can Cool ways you can use the terminal blocks. Um, in this particular case, I've got the hot coming into th to this side and the ground coming in this side because I only needed two leads. Um, sometimes you, if you're going to have a bunch of stuff coming off, you might have two terminal blocks side by side. But the way that you do it is, the hot c comes in here, and then I have a short little wire going to this one, a short little wire going to this one. So all of these are hot, and then on this side I have the ground coming in, short little wire coming across. And so these are all ground. So like I say, hot coming in the middle and I have one section coming off here. Um, I'm gonna show you in a minute how do you put in these T-taps. It's a T-tap going up to the, the very first uh, um, 
feeder line that I, that I, that I showed. And then I have this line is going straight on back. Now you see how I have the holes drilled? Um, in a previous video when I was building the frame, I explained the best reason for having those holes drilled. Um, so you don't have these dangling wires. I mean, I'll be using these guys to bring them up to the top, but you don't have them coming down. Like see how I have this power cord coming down? Because dummy me, the hole I drilled wasn't big enough for the plug to fit through. Eventually I'll um, have to, uh, ooh, stop a over my words. Eventually I'll have to drill a bigger hole for that to fit through so it, it doesn't come down like that. Um, and then as you see, there's two wires going off. The one on the left, is the one that's actually gonna, gonna have the feeders coming off of it. Um, for the first half of the track, the one on the right is gonna go all the way down around. I don't know if you can see it from here. Um, you can see it hanging down right there. It's gonna hook up and then give extra supply to the rest of the track going to this side. Um, I did wire up my lift bridge over there. So um, there's not, not that wire on the outside that I showed you in the, in the uh, video of doing the lift bridge. I just had a lock on there temporarily. So there we go. So now we're gonna go to up here and hopefully I'm gonna do this where my hands aren't gonna be in the way too much. Um, what I'm using are these T-taps. They're pretty simple. Um, you put them on the wire, just crimp them down no uh, splicing in or anything needed. You crimp them down, and then you have just an end piece that is going to slide right into the right into the the uh, T tap. I'm clip doing this so you can see that. Yeah, so it's going to slide right in. So let's show you how we do this. So the first thing that I have to do. This is the only wire stripping aspect of this that you have to do is we have to strip just the ends of these wires. So we'll go in there and. love this Klein, this Klein wire stripper. It works so well, it makes it so easy. And then we just have to twist those a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. I don't have the best lighting in here. And when you buy the T-taps, uh, the ones I bought came in a little box where you got, um, uh, I think there were 20 or, 20 to 22 gauge, then a 18 gauge, or 16, 18, and then a 12, 14. Um, the blue are the ones I need for the 16 gauge. And we're just gonna tighten that on there. Crimp it down. Crimp, crimp. Crimp, crimp. Make sure it's tight. Oh, see that? Didn't do, do it tight enough. That's why you got to be double check this stuff. And I even ended up cutting the wire. Uh, so with these, when you have to cut the wire, just put it through and bingo, the wire's cut. And hopefully it's still gonna reach. It's gonna be close, yeah, it'll reach. Otherwise they're gonna have to change that wire out, which I was not in the mood to do. Okay, so. Try this a second time. Do I have? Yeah, there's my other one. Make sure that that's through far enough. There we go, that one's tight. Let's put the ground on. And pop it through there. What's nice is these are kind of translucent, so I can actually see the wire from the other side to make sure that I'm not pushing it through too far and to make sure that I'm pushing it through far enough. All right, so that one's in there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on these T-taps. And they're very, very simple. All you need is a set of pliers. So, as you see, OK. 
Okay, this one is going to this wire. It's gonna go right here. So we're gonna put the ground on first. You just put it in there, line it up. Take your pliers. Hopefully you guys can see this. I don't know if the camera angle is right. Let's try and change it over here. Squeeze that down. Let's make sure you guys are seeing it. Yeah, you should be able to see that. And then we're gonna put the one on the hot. Same way. Just put it on the wire. And a little squeeze. And they got a little tab that locks it into place. And then we just take our, uh, make sure we're hooking them up to the right ones. So that's our hot. And then there, you'll hear them click. Well, and there's our second one. And bingo, that's it. So I'm gonna just, uh, I'll put a little, should have ran over the top of that, but I'll put a little, one of these little cable ties in right there. And there you go, nice and clean. All right guys, boy, you really feel your age when you're climbing, having to climb down underneath that, that uh, bench work. The hips are a little sore, knees are hurting, and I got a lot more to do underneath there, but uh, it's getting, yeah, it's getting kind of late tonight. I think I might call it a night and then, uh, back to work tomorrow so next weekend we'll be doing some more wiring if i'm doing anything that's uh, out of the ordinary or something you think you guys might want to see i'll definitely um i'll definitely post another video and uh um if not the video i will post will also be a lay update oh speaking of updates let me show you something real quick that i did so i uh i showed you guys my uh american flyer wall art i picked up a cool sign for it. It's actually a uh, a sign from uh, somewhere in the in the late somewhere in the 50s, I believe. Um, it does state on it in very very small print right up there in the corner. It does say uh, American Flyer by Lionel, um, but it's a nice it's a porcelain sign. It's, it's actually pretty heavy. I picked it up on eBay. Um, you know, I, I probably paid more than I should have. Um, but I, I really like it a lot. I think it added a lot to that, to the presentation of that particular uh, particular piece there. So other than that, I don't know. There's really not not much else to show you guys. Um, so I think, yeah, I think we'll call it a day today. And uh, you guys have a wonderful uh, week. And I'll be back with you next week. Um, I got got a few bids on a couple of cool things on eBay. Hopefully. Uh, I'll win, and uh, if they're here by then, I'll show them to you. There was something else that I got, and I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I don't know. I, getting hold sucks, man. <laughs> the, the, the hips go, the knees go, so does the memory sometimes. <laughs> All right, everybody. You guys have a wonderful week, and uh, we'll get back with you the next time around. Choo-choo! Hey, I just remember what it was that I couldn't remember. There was something else that I worked on. Let me give it walk you over there and we'll show you real quick i added some shelves decided i'd change change up a little bit um well i gotta turn around okay so now i'm actually standing on my stairs leading into the basement so it's you can see the presentation of the way this these new shelves work so there we go Right now I get just the majority of my engines on there. Top few shelves are all my pre-war stuff. But I figure that gives a nice as soon as it, a nice little wow factor right when you walk in the room and seeing everything there. Let's see if we can get back far enough to see. That's almost the whole room right when you walk in the door. All right, guys, so now I'll give you that final choo-choo.